Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. If you've been following my channel you may have seen my series on my tilting recumbent Velomobile project and I've got to the stage now where I'm working on the rear wheel and here it is. Now I've decided for various reasons to build up my own wheel so I bought the hub, the rim and the spokes and I've got to the stage where I've laced it all together but what I need to do now is adjust the spokes so that the rim is running truly around the hub. Now in order to do that you need a wheel truing stand. And of course you can buy truing stands for, well, north of £100 or more. Um, and I've already blown my budget on the components for the wheel itself, so I've got no money left. Um, and for that reason I'm going to make my own truing stand, but I think I can do a perfectly good job using scrap materials that will cost me nothing because I've already got them in my storage bin. So here's my truing stand. It's very simple. It consists of two uprights made of MDF, one on the right, one on the left here. The wheel slots into the top into two slots in some pieces of aluminium. Uh, the other key component is this bit which is a dishing stick and you use this to set the offset of the wheel by measuring across one side like that and then the other and I'll show you how that works in a bit. And the whole thing is clamped down to this workmate workbench which allows me to move the jaw just to adjust it properly. And finally you've got the dial test indicator here or any pointing device will do to measure the offset of the wheel as it rotates. So that's all there is to it. Now sit back and I'll show you how I made it. Uh, basically it's, the base is 120mm square, there's a reinforcing bracket and the upright is 140mm. This bit at the top is going to be an aluminium plate with a slot to take the wheel axle and another slot to give a bit of vertical adjustment. So let's make a start cutting out those bits of wood. I'm using scrap MDF here, marking out the shapes with a biro and then I'm going to cut them out with a wood saw and sand off the edges with a piece of sandpaper. So those bits are now made and it's just a case of gluing them together using standard wood glue. Well that's the angle plates done, the glue's now drying so the next bit is to make the metal bits that will go on the top. And for this I'm using a piece of 3mm aluminium plate that I found in my stores bin, just marking out the shapes with a sharpie pen. And here I'm centre marking the holes that will form part of the slots. Now drilling the holes using a 10mm drill just to start those slots off. So I've transferred the metal plate to the milling machine and I'm just going to mill those two slots to give the vertical adjustment of the plates. You don't need a milling machine for this, just do chain drilling a number of holes and then a file or a saw to cut the slots out. I'm just using the milling machine because I've got one and it makes life a little bit easier to do it this way. Well that's the two slots cut. I managed to do that without breaking anything which makes a bit of a change. So all I need to do now is cut these pieces out, slot the ends there to open up those slots, file them off so they're nice and smooth and then that's it for this part. Right I've just milled out those two slots on the milling machine as well. I thought I'd do that using the machine rather than filing them by hand. plates can now be separated using a jigsaw or a hacksaw or any kind of saw that's suitable for cutting through aluminium. I don't know where the other one's gone. Just filing off the sharp edges to tidy it up and make it look a little bit neater and stop you cutting your fingers on the edges. And those are the two adjustable plates finished. Now I'm just marking out the position of the holes for the adjustable plates on the uprights using a brad awl to start the hole off and then it's just a case of drilling the holes using a hand drill or the drilling machine as in this case. And the adjustable plates can now be assembled to the uprights using nuts, bolts and washers. I'm 
I'm just going to stick these little wooden guides on to help prevent the plates from swivelling too much. And in the interests of time, I'm going to use super glue. So now moving on to making the dishing stick. The dishing stick is the bit you need to set the offset of the wheel when you're truing it in the stand. Again I'm just using a bit of scrap MDF, marking out the shape and cutting it out with a handsaw. Nothing particularly sophisticated about this stage. Once the shape's cut out, the rough edges can be tidied off using some sandpaper. Now I'm drilling the two holes for the adjustable pointer. Again, back with the aluminium plate, marking out the shape of the pointer and cutting it out using a jigsaw. The pointer is also adjustable, so I'm going to go back to the milling machine to mill a slot. Again, you don't need to do this in a milling machine, just a chain drilling of holes, hacksaw, files will do the job just as well, albeit probably a little bit less quickly. That's the slot finished. Now it just needs tidying up with files to get rid of the sharp edges. All the bits of the dishing stick are now complete and it can be assembled using nuts and bolts. This is how you set your wheel offset measuring device. Push it up against a straight edge. Probably use a straighter edge than this in real life, but that will do for now. Get your vernier calipers or other measuring device, set the required offset, stick it in the gap there, push the nose of the plunger against it, hold it steady, then tighten the screws. And hey presto, that's your offset set. And this is what we've got to so far. Offset measuring device and our two uprights. Our work is complete for the day. Okay, it's the next morning. I've recovered from my hangover and the next thing we're going to need for this project is a standard workbench like this with an adjustable front jaw. Now we can start to assemble our wheel stand. Left hand upright, right hand upright, go onto the workbench like this, and we are going to clamp them into place using these clamps. Right, and the reason we have an adjustable workbench is we can move the jaws like this to bring the uprights in and out and adjust the fit across the lock nuts. And the next thing to do is to adjust these sliders so that the wheel can sit in there vertically. So this one on the left, just going to set to any position, it doesn't particularly matter. Just tightening it up with an Allen key and a spanner. So if we now take our wheel, I'm going to adjust the jaws of the workbench so that the lock nuts sit neatly between the two uprights. And then just by eye, I'm going to adjust the position of the left hand slider so that the wheel is approximately vertical. I think we can do this just by eye, it's not critical. So now we can sit the wheel in its supports and it's held securely. The final thing we need is a pointer so that we can check the radial and axial run out of the wheel. I'm using a dial test indicator in a stand here and I'm going to clamp this to the workbench but any pointer will do, you don't need the accuracy of the DTI, uh, just some kind of stick or pointer that can point at the rim of the wheel in that direction and also that direction. So we can check the axial run out which is that way and the radial run out which is in and out. To avoid any risk of the probe of my dial test indicator scratching the rim I'm going to stick a little bit of insulating tape over the probe.
So there you have it, that's how I made my very cheap and effective truing stand. In the next video I'm going to talk a little bit about how to build and true a wheel uh, using my particular example. There's quite a lot to it in terms of the lacing pattern, the, you know, choosing the length of the spokes and how it all goes together and how the wheel is then trued up properly. So I'm going to be using my truing stand in anger, hopefully to finish off this wheel and get it ready to the point where I can fix it to the trike. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I publish my next video. Uh, in the meantime, leave any comments or questions down below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye.